Hello and welcome to yet another edition of CNBC Africa Special. My name is Steven Muvunyi. Today, we sit down with the Minister of Trade and Industry, Soraya Hakuziarimi, to discuss Rwanda's recent admission to the OECD Center and more to do with trade. Minister, thank you very much for your time to speak to CNBC Africa. We are so pleased to have you at this moment. So uh, let's get straight uh, into this conversation. Mm. Last May, Rwanda was admitted to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. So how did we get here? Just give us a little bit of a background. Um, so thank you for having me. Uh, it's really a pleasure and an honor to be able to, one, speak about Rwanda's trade performance and uh, also the achievement you've made of Rwanda being um, uh, you know, accepted as a member of the uh, OECD Development Center. So some people confuse it and think that Rwanda has become a member of uh, the OECD, the Organization for Economic um, Cooperation um, and Devel in Development, but it's the OECD Development Center, which is a larger group of countries uh, where OECD member states are also members, uh, along with developing countries, as they say. So the um, Development Center has now 55 countries from across the world, and Rwanda is uh, one of the African members uh, to date, with Rwanda included. Uh, the Development Center has uh, 11 African countries. And uh, important to notice that Rwanda is the first country in the East African community to join the OECD Development Center. So the process was, uh, took some years and um, you know, the Rwanda Development Board and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, and International Cooperation of Rwanda were really lead uh, in, in making sure that Rwanda can uh, you know, successfully be admitted to the whole process where they reviewed um, you know, all our policies for development investments before we were accepted. It took roughly uh, four years. But we're glad that in the end, um, you know, we were, uh, we became member of the Development Center, especially that this is um, an opportunity for Rwanda to share its development experience with, with other member states. It's also, I think, a testimony to Rwanda's development journey. Uh, and the progress we have made uh, in the last 25 years uh, to be able to be admitted to Development Center, to be admitted as a member, meaning that we can share our lessons with, with the other member states. And, uh, and I believe, uh, you know, this is something that we should be really uh, happy and proud about. But also this is, I think, um, also a challenge for us because then we're going to be assessed by uh, the other member states. And it's a good thing that we also challenged on, on the development trajectory that we are on. What exactly does the country stand to gain? Uh, can you break down for us the benefits that we're going to have? Mm -hmm. So the benefits are, are, are various. Uh, the first one in which Rwanda is interested in is um, really to um, work with, with the development center, with uh, you know, other member states, but also the researchers in the development center on you know, having evidence-based policies uh, so that they can also provide us with inputs on the policies we are, we are uh, developing or the ones that we already have. Uh, you know, the OECD has resources, be it in, in, in you know, um, advising in policies, but also conducting um, deep studies on, on, you know, various sectors of, of the economy which we think we can leverage on. And they were very open as well to also let Rwanda, you know, also choose where the fields that we think we can work with, with, uh, with the center on. And a second aspect is also to be able to, um, you know, tap into the multinationals that are, um, you know, uh, multinationals from other OECD member states, especially uh, multinationals from, from developed countries uh, through what they call the emerging uh, markets or multinationals forum, where multinationals from developed countries meet 
developing countries and explore opportunities, investment opportunities, but also any other area of collaboration. And uh, Rwanda was also invited to, to high-level dialogue where uh, multinationals were also present and where we can you know showcase what we have achieved but also those multinationals give insights into what drives them in investing in countries where they think you know growth of or investment opportunities will come from so having access to those multinationals in such a forum is something that I think will be important for Rwanda as we we, we uh, you know we keep on attracting investors in our country and uh, the third, um, I think, uh, important uh, thing we are, we are likely to gain it, one, exposure into another sort of forum, uh, and also, um, you know, also sharing our experiences in different uh, sectors. Uh, one example I can give is the uh, high-level um, meeting of the governing board of the OECD uh, where, when Rwanda was admitted last month, was discussing uh, issues of, uh, you know, social inequalities uh, around the world and giving examples of uh, social protection programs, not only in developing countries, but developed countries as well. And this is something that we, we can learn from as we, you know, we are a country which has known a very high growth, uh, you know, 8% over the last 15 years. But it's also uh, asking, is that growth, uh, you know, shared across the board? And uh, this is a question that many countries are dealing with. You know, in Europe, in, in the US, it's, it's really questions about inequality and what sort of protection do you provide from the for the first most vulnerable, you know, of your population. So these are the kind of topics that one Rwanda can learn from, but also provide uh, you know, examples of how we've been able to, 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 you know, address social protection and how we're working to make sure that as we develop, we don't leave anyone behind uh, and, and that we, we can also achieve an inclusive growth. So that's an example yeah, of, of... What should be our expectations in, in terms of our trade relations with uh, OECD member countries is, is, is the, the fact that Rwanda has been admitted, is it going to have any change in, in terms of trade with other countries? Where we hope that we can see the benefits in terms of trade relations, mostly with non-traditional partners of Rwanda. We've had uh, you know, uh, trade relations with most OECD countries, be it uh, European Union countries, the US, uh, South Korea is a member of, of OECD, so these are, you know, countries we already have relations with, uh, trade relations, diplomatic relations, investments from. But now it's also having access in, in uh, you know, uh, in, in a trade context to, to some countries you would not think about. Uh, for instance, Latin American countries where we don't have enough of those trades, but this is a forum where we meet them. And actually they were very enthusiastic on, in learning about Rwanda and what we can offer. Of course, these are countries that we can say they are far away from Rwanda, but it is China f further away than Brazil or, or um, you know, Guatemala, which is uh, a country that joined OECD Development Center at the same time as we are. And it gives us access to those countries, and it's up to us to, to really see where we could trade more, what do we need from them, what do they need from us, and use that forum to, to um, nurture more relation, more trade relations. Minister, I want you to talk to me about uh, other regional bodies that Rwanda already belong to, like the, the economic community of the Great Lakes, also known as uh, the CPGL in French. So how significant are they to Rwanda's trade and economy? Because some people argue that some of these organizations have become obsolete. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this? Um, my thoughts is that if you take Sepejal countries, uh, so Rwanda, DRC, Demo Democratic Republic of Congo, and Burundi, we do trade with them in natural. So Sepejal had not like a common market framework that ESC has, for instance, but then we trade with Burundi through the ESC common market. We trade with DRC in cross-border trade, but we're also part of COMESA. 
Um, so these are, you know, important partners for us, uh, as any neighbor should be. And, and if we take the, the uh, example of DRC, for instance, our um, exports to DRC were around $230 million, uh, or, or approximately that. Uh, with Burundi, we see that there's been a decrease in our trade, uh, but due to, to the political instability that we all know. But still, you know, we managed to, to also export around $3 million uh, worth of, of goods to, to Burundi. So uh, I would not say that CPGL is obsolete. It's just that on the trade, um, on the trade uh, aspect, we already trade through ESC or through Comesa with both countries, and uh, and you know the, the the goal is to to continue on that trend and and make sure that we can trade more. And as Ministry of of Trade and Industry, can we export more to to our neighboring countries? That's what will help us reduce the trade deficit. As as you know, it's one of our challenges now. All right, so back in 2016, Rwanda rejoined the economic community of Central Africa states, and the country had exited um, the bloc in 20, uh, 2007, and the African Union had advised uh, uh, Rwanda that, uh, and other countries that they should avoid overlapping memberships in several regional economic communities. So do you consider this concern when joining uh, regional bodies like uh, these ones? Uh, I think for Rwanda we haven't, uh, we, we were a member of ECAS and we, we, we rejoined ECAS. So it's not a new regional economic community and when you look at uh, you know, the regional economic communities we're part of, be it ESC or COMESA, the western and central part of Africa is not in it. But I think that concern will no longer be the case now that we are part of the continental free trade area. Um, and, and the continental free trade area also provides the fact that, you know, we, you build on the regional economic communities you're part of. As uh, you know, as a stepping stone to to full integration at continental level. So I think Rwanda's choice of joining regional economic communities made sense, was strategic, and was trying to achieve what the CFTA is achieving now, meaning having more intra-African trade, being able to to trade with as many countries in Africa as possible. So this was possible regionally through ESC, through Comesa, and now you know, through the SAFTA, uh, ICAS, it was the Central African states, but now through the CFTA, we actually have a reach to, to the largest number of African countries. Let's now take a short break. When we return, we talk trade. Stick around. Welcome back to our conversation. Uh, Minister, let's now shift gears and talk about trade. Uh, in 2018, uh, the volume of exports grew by 17%, but the trade deficit widened by 12.4%. So taking into account these figures, um, do you think the Made in Rwanda initiative uh, has brought any changes uh, since 2015, when it was initiated? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, Made in Rwanda brought in uh, not only a new momentum for our exports, but also on the domestic market, starting to shift the mindset of, of consuming what is locally produced. Uh, the data I just give, gave for 2018 um, would not give a full picture of what Made in Rwanda has achieved. It's true, in 2018, because our import bill, um, you know, uh, increased, and this is mainly due to um, uh, rise in prices of oil, essentially. So when you take uh, oil prices in 2016, for instance, where the barrel had uh, fallen down 
to twenty-four dollars at some times, and now it's back to sixty-five dollars. Time I checked, but it's been a couple of months. So you can see already on that on our input bill, it, it will have an impact. However, uh, when the Run Made in Rwanda initiative started in 2015, and we, we looked um, on, on uh, you know, impact on exports, in the first three years we were able to increase export by 69%. Last year we didn't achieve the 17% uh, that sits in the NST1 goal, but still it's increasing uh, to the fact of 7%, and I think uh, you know, as, as we continue, um, you know, to, to put efforts into, uh, one, implementing the policies, but also tackling challenges of, of our made in Rwanda industries, as far as the cost of production is concerned, as far as competitiveness of products is concerned, we believe that this is something that we really help uh, our economy to grow, our industries to grow, and, and ultimately our exports and, and then the trade balance. Although we can, we have to also factor in market dynamics. Um, you know, our uh, biggest exports to traditional exports, be it coffee, tea, and even minerals, most of them, we don't control their prices. These are international market prices. So where we know we can control is on the volume, on the quality, and this is where our efforts will be and should be. Um, and, and in other sectors that, that you know, we are also pushing ahead, especially as we, you know, make sure that we can substitute our imports to reduce that import bill. It's also making sure that we target one niche sectors um, where we can be competitive uh, very quickly, but also, you know, giving incentives to our private sector so that they can really invest and, and be, you know, build sustainable businesses in those sectors, being in construction materials, um, you know, in agro-processing and in light manufacturing. I want us to discuss uh, the target uh, the government has of uh, increasing uh, the contrib industrial contribution to GDP to 21 percent uh, by 2024 under the national strategy uh, for transformation from 17 percent currently. So where are we now and uh, what are we doing differently to ensure uh, this is achieved? Um, so the good news is uh, when you look at the, the statistics, be it, you know, uh, in growth terms, industry is still uh, is the most growing sector in our country at double digit. Uh, and we need to keep that momentum to achieve that target to have industry represent 21.6%, uh, I think, a bit less than 22% of GDP. And I think it's the only choice we have as a country. Uh, we cannot be a middle-income country if we're not industrialized. We will not be a middle-income country if we don't have, you know, uh, massive production that can create jobs for the maximum people. The challenge is that industrialization is a very demanding uh, endeavor in terms of capital required, in terms of skills required. Uh, so this is not a task for the Ministry of, of, of Trade and Industry only, but it's really also tapping in in all, you know, working with all government institutions, be it the Ministry of Education, making sure that the skills we need as we grow our industrial base uh, will be available at the time and as we industrialize. Access to finance is, an, is another key. Oh, what is the role of government? Uh, of course, we have set up industrial parks, we're providing infrastructure, but then the role of the private sector as well in uh, you know, uh, building sustainable businesses and making them uh, profitable and attracting investors in areas where we don't have expertise not only to get access to technology, but also to, to the financing that this requires. So um, it's, it's a challenge uh, for, for our country to develop and, and, and really reach that middle income um, target that we want to achieve. But it's also, it's also a necessity. So 
I don't see any other option for us to, to become you know, a middle-income country and then later on by 2050 uh, uh, an upper-income country. Uh, this will, will require much more efforts that, that, than we've, we've seen and, and some people say uh, the work is only starting. You talked about uh, Rwanda and DRC trade earlier in the conversation and uh, um, the, the, the DRC has expressed interest in joining the East African community. So um, what impact uh, could this have on uh, the trade between the two countries and uh, probably share insights into how you think uh, DRC's admission could shape the body? Um, uh, d having DRC join the ESC and, uh, you know, uh, His Excellency the President of Republic uh, indicated um, last week that, you know, he would be supportive to it. And I think ESC member state would only benefit from, from DRC joining um, the community. Uh, and I see two main reasons. One, uh, you know, our regional economic community uh, the larger it is, uh, the better as far as you can manage, um, uh, you know, uh, those entries and make sure that you, you harmonize all the standards and regulations. Um, second is that we all know DRC is, is a large market, uh, more than 80 million people. Um, and one of the largest uh, countries in Africa. So if it joins the EAC, we all as member states benefit from it. But before it joins the ESC, already on the bilateral level, uh, you've seen you know, a number of initiatives. Uh, when, when Rwanda launched its, uh, its first direct flight to Kinshasa, we had a business delegation of more than 35 business people from Rwanda who took part to, into the um, initial flight and were able to engage with their DRC counterparts and, and discuss business and investment opportunities. Uh, that was one. Uh, we had also, you know, um, meetings with, with uh, the DRC uh, ministers, being the Minister of uh, External Trade or the Minister of Industry to see what we can, uh, you know, uh, areas of we can cooperate in. The Trade Minister of DRC also visited Rwanda in May, where we, uh, we, we made some commitments on the cross-border trade and, and were able to unlock some of, uh, of, of factors that had been hindering the cross-border trade. And this is really a start of, of not a start, actually, it's, it's strengthening the trade relations that, that evolve and making sure that, you know, uh, our countries can uh, can uh, you know benefit from from the new momentum in our relationship and have business people from both both countries trade more uh, in the region. DRC is our, our main trading partner, and we're hoping also as we uh, you know we, we build on this made in Rwanda that we can uh, offer to the Congolese market all the products that we have, but that they can also do the same. Uh, and I recall that in my discussions with the Minister of Industry uh, of DRC, he was also interested in our policy on how we developed industrial parks and see how we can partner in, the, in that area as well. So I think there are still a lot of sectors we can um, we can we can work on together as two countries, but also supporting DRC joining the ESC so that it can be part of the common market. Before I wrap up the conversation, uh, we've been seeing political disputes between um, countries in the region. Uh, we we know that Rwanda and Uganda are, are currently not you know in good relations. So, what measures? Are is the government put in putting in place to ensure uh, that uh, the effects on trade are minimized? Um, I think we have to be realistic. There cannot be trade uh, if there's no security. And, and for Rwanda, the security of our people, wherever they are in the world, is of ultimate importance. 
now uh, it's not surprising that the um, issues that uh, you know Rwandans uh, going into Uganda and being tortured, arrested, harassed for no reason has had an impact on our trade flows. Um, one, we cannot uh, let our people, you know, without warning them of the dangers they encounter. And among those people are business people. Now, uh, these issues are being discussed diplomatically, and we hope they'll be solved soon so that, you know, the normal trade flow can resume. Thank you very much, Minister. And that's where we leave today's edition of CNBC Africa Special. There's much more to talk about in trade and industry. Be sure to join our next edition. Thanks for your company.